Doug, welcome. We're coming at you live like we always do on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Sorry if you were watching and we cut away. We had a little technical difficulties. But uh, we're back and I'm really excited to share with you some awesome Easter decor. I love materials. I get really inspired by my tools and materials and I have a really exciting new tool to share with you. This is called a pattern roller. It is a Martha Stewart craft brand item and um, Martha Stewart stuff is actually made by Plaid, which is one of our great friends and you probably have a lot of cool plaid things at home they make mod podge and all kinds of our favorite paints like fabric creations and folk art so the way this works is it's meant to reproduce a wallpaper like pattern on walls but I'm using it entirely on paper and fabric for some Easter decor that I think is gonna wow you this is how the roller comes um, you can get these individual patterned rollers and it says what the pattern is on the package so this is a wood grain pattern um, I have many many styles so that's what the wood grain roller looks like this one is a sort of wheat and flower pattern this one's a really cute little ditzy floral as we call it and I love this one uh, it's like leaves and there's a hidden bird in here and I'm gonna start with this one to show you the way that you put this together is if you look there's a slight angle and you want this to be going up not down like that so up like this and we're gonna put the foam roller this is a high density foam this is where your paint is gonna be loaded and this is gonna go into the second or middle hole in this bottom section of holes. This is flexible so that you can kind of pry it apart and it'll spring back together. And then your roller goes in the bottom, but first we need to load this up with paint. And you can use this almost with any paint. I tried this with house paint. I tried it with chalk paint. I actually just like regular craft paint. We're gonna start with our lightest color if you only have one foam roller, then start with your lightest color because you can start mixing your colors. The key to this is really loading up this foam roller with as much paint as you can. And it'll take almost an entire container of craft paint. If you've seen any of my other classes, oh no, paint, paint on the floor. And I'm using uh, just an enamel tray. You can be using a cookie sheet, so this is going to be a little noisy for a second because this is clanking against. But you can see that this is really absorbing paint into that foam roller, and that's key because this is a little bit tricky to uh, take off and on if you're switching colors. It's going to get messy for sure. And so it's nice to just get as much paint as you can right from the onset can really see it's soaking up that paint and then once we're ready we can pop in our roller the roller is going to go in the bottom of the two holes at the top of this little holder all right you can do a little twist and what's awesome about this process is that you're not re-inking or reapplying paint to your roller that's what this foam is for and so it just does it automatically you can use a test sheet but you know what I don't feel like anything is a test sheet you can reuse anything we're gonna start with just some eight and a half paper and you're gonna roll right off the edge so you get a full pattern piece of paper here try to line it up with a slight overlap <gasps> Ooh, look at that now this is cool because the intensity of these two colors is pretty well matched and so you get like a very subtle almost damask print which I love. Um, I also love the newsprint that I'm working on because after a while this creates this like beautiful spring toned frame. Let's try it on another color. Let's try yellow. Roll up. Roll up. Ah! So easy I can't even imagine this is so fast if I were to like hand stamp this with wooden blocks or even rubber stamps this would take me like 10 minutes it dries really quickly too because you're applying a pretty thin layer let's try it on a little bit darker piece and see what we get Brie, can I ask you a question yeah serenity would like to know is the graphic consistent would there be a transition point or does it just smoothly repeat on all rolls? Yeah, that's an excellent question. Did you say Serenity is asking? Uh -huh. Hi, Serenity. Welcome. Thanks for writing in and asking a question. It's a really good question um, about how the pattern creates. Some of the prints are very easy and seamless, and so I'm not keeping track when I'm rolling. I just keep going, and everything lines up really nicely because there's just enough repeat and also kind of open dots and loops and things that you really can't see the seam. The wood grain 
pattern is going to be a little bit different and that one you really can see where there's a seam and I'll show you some examples in a little bit. So you do want to be mindful when you're rolling, especially if you were doing a wall. So when you're doing a wall, you're going to go from the top to the bottom and just drag. If you need to reload your roller, I think this does about four or five passes on an actual wall. And so you just want to be checking for print and so forth. I did see a tip online where people, um, the woman who invented this roller, did a plus, like she did a little plus on one side and then exactly on the opposite side, she put a little minus. So every time she started, she started at a plus and on the next line she started on a minus. So if you are doing a full wall like that, I would recommend that tip. But for this kind of decor, you don't have to worry about being that precise because it just looks so good every time you roll and you can see how fast it is. Let's add a darker color. I'm not even gonna wash out my roller. This does get a little bit messy though, so I'm gonna try to carefully take out one roller. I'm gonna leave the sponge applicator as it is, and I'm gonna add some more paint. Let's go pink. I'm just gonna add it right on top. You can see I've been using these. So we're just mixing right on our tray here. And I can add a little bit of this color too. I'm mixing my Martha Stewart and my folk art craft paint for some, custo some custom colorway here. So starting lighter is nice because I only have the one foam roller and I don't want to introduce water. Um, and so if I were to rinse this out, just like it absorbs a bunch of paint, it could also absorb a bunch of water and that might give me a really fine application of paint. And also it wouldn't last as long. I'd have to recharge the roller more often. So I just like to go from light to dark when I'm considering what I'm making. You can see how thick that is. Just pick up your roller and let it spin until you get it really applied in there. Sorry, it's so noisy. All right, um, do you guys wanna see a new roller? Do you wanna see a different pattern? Let's do a different pattern. Let's do this really cool kind of flower and wheat pattern. You can give it a spin. All right, and let's pick some paper. Move this guy out of the way. Make sure you do clean everything off when you're done printing. Ooh, so great. Look how fast that is. It's nuts. You can tell I'm so excited. Okay, let's try green. I really like playing with these color combinations. This is just regular eight and a half by 11 like copy paper. It's not fancy. <gasps> I mean, it's so easy, you guys. I can't even believe it. it. Makes everything so fast. I even did this really fun thing where I took a bunch of washi tape and this is on wax paper and I just laid it down. Usually washi tape has a bit of a waxy coating and so pen ink won't stick to it, but I thought we'll just try with the paint because I'm using multi-surface paint, it sticks on a lot of great things. So why not try it? <gasps> yeah, so cool. Oh my God, you definitely wanna let this dry. But like I said with our paper, um, because you're laying down a pretty thin layer, this will dry pretty quickly. It worked even better on masking tape. Let me show you what that looks like. You guys, if you have questions, write in and let me know. They, they do have a few. <laughs> okay. And, and I also was hoping you could tell people about some of the creative ones. Oh yeah, um, let me show you a couple things. This is the masking tape. So this is Scotch brand max masking tape in a color. And this is just using um, my multi-surface paint. This happens to be a purple tone and this is yellow on a green. And I just love how cool this is. And because it's on wax paper, you can save it on here until you're ready to use it. So if you're doing Easter table decor, like let's say you're doing a little napkin roll with the cutlery, this could go around it. If you're doing people's name cards, if you wanna put this around some votives, like you would washi tape to uh, kind of customize your candles, all of this can be used and it was so quick and easy to do you can just roll right over it if you guys are excited about surface design you should definitely check out creative bug we have over a thousand classes taught by a hundred different artists who are expert in their field not only on illustration and art but also sewing and quilting crochet and so much more 
you could tell maybe that I'm a little bit obsessed with pattern. If you watch my live shoot a couple weeks ago, I was doing mono printing, and I even said today, I'm not sure that this table is big enough to hold all of the things that I want to show you. But check out Creative Bug because we have hundreds, actually over thousands of classes, um, and you can do that. Leanna's going to post a link for you. Are we doing a Joanne one? We're doing Joanne 30, which is 30 days free and 30% off at Joanne. Awesome, we're doing a promo for Joanne 30. Leanna will post the link, which means you get 30 free days of Creative Bug, and you get 30% off on joanne.com. So you can gather all your materials, you can get one of these cool paint rollers, um, or just stock up on your paint if you already have the roller. Maybe you guys have used this before. Have you used it before? It's pretty awesome. I'm like really excited about it. Oh, I wanna show you something else. Um, while we're still talking about paper. So I showed you regular paper, just eight and a half by 11 paper. You can turn that into placemats or you can use it for cards or stationery. I showed you on masking tape. This is just a pack of Avery labels. And I thought it was so cute to do these little printed labels. Again, you can use this for place cards. Um, you can do it for little gift tags. You can use it just for like mailing. I think this thing, I mean, it's so quick. Let's even do a double pattern. I really like doing that. So this is a pattern I hadn't showed you yet. This is the roller with the bird. And, oh, that's the one we started with actually. And now I'm gonna show you the, this one that we've been using for the last minute, and this has the flowers on it. So again, just roll right up. Oh, it didn't catch it there. I think I was talking for too long. Let's just see if we can kind of roll it. There we go. Oh my God, I love it. I mean, you guys probably think this looks nuts, but this is the kind of thing that I'm totally obsessed with. I love it when things overlap. In fact, I teach a class on Creative Bug um, called Paste Paper, which is how to do your own designed pattern papers. And one of my favorite things to do is what I call plaid, wood grain plaid. And I actually did a napkin. So let me show you, um, I'll move this away. If you're doing this at home, don't throw this away because this is really pretty and I would save this for something. Just and, gonna move over. Can you tell us really quickly, Maha wants to know, does the roller dry quickly in case I get distracted and can't do it right away? Maha's asking, does the roller dry quickly? You know, you have a little bit of time. We're under studio lights, so things are pretty hot in the studio, if I, if I do say so myself. Um, and so this does, it starts to dry out because I had kind of left it on an absorbent surface like the newsprint and we're under the heat. But you saw once I started rolling again, it's fine. I would work quickly um, just because you don't want anything to dry out. You don't want the color to shift or change. And you're gonna be so excited to use it. You won't be able to stop. You won't have a problem about pausing, trust me. It's only because someone's asking me a question. Leanna. <laughs> um, what was I gonna do? I was just gonna show you, oh, on fabric. Okay, so if you are doing it on fabric, I would recommend switching to a fabric paint. Plaid also makes some great fabric paint. This is called Fabric Creations. The difference between a fabric paint and a real, regular acrylic paint is that once it dries, the fabric paint still allows for like a really nice soft feel on your fabric. If you were to use a regular acrylic paint, it would still work on fabric, but when it dries, it can be hard. It can often crack, it's not as washable. So using a fabric paint is a nice way to go for, um, for fabric. So let me show you on a napkin. Sorry, I have so many things happening on this table. This is a 100% cotton napkin. It's been washed and kind of poorly ironed, but it's ironed enough for me. <laughs> We're gonna, again, um, add a new color of paint because I wanna use that fabric paint. I'm gonna take off my roller. Uh, and Maha, you're asking about when it dries, you know, does it dry, do you have to worry about it? Definitely make sure that you are cleaning off, just using one of my handy baby wipes for my hands here so I don't mess up my napkin. Make sure that you are cleaning off your rollers because, you know, they're not, a dollar a piece. They cost something to invest in. There's no reason in ruining good materials. So because we're working with acrylic paint, when it dries, it becomes kind of plasticky. Make sure that you clean these well. And because um, the relief on this is so deep, you might want to get in there with a really soft like paintbrush or toothbrush to get all of the paint out of those areas. It's a good question. Can you I'll tell us how much the roller costs? Somebody else wants to know. I have no idea. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much the roller costs because Plaid sent them to me because I saw them online and was like, I have to have this. Can you please send it to me immediately? And they accommodated, which is so nice because I'm obsessed. Wait till you see everything I've printed. It's pretty nuts. I was like printing all day yesterday. I have probably 100 pieces of paper and I arrange them in rainbow order because that's how crazy I am sometimes. Um, yeah, I think, you know, save your 40% off coupon. It may be a little bit more of an investment. I want to say that the rollers like these little guys could be about 12 to $15. I'm not 100% sure. We can check that. But um, yeah, save your, save your coupon because then you can invest. And if you take good care of your materials, it'll last a really long time. Maybe one of you goes in on like two rollers, another friend gets the other two, you guys can swap back and forth, have a printing night. That's how I would do it. 
All right, we're gonna switch. Again, I'm not rinsing anything out. If you were gonna sit down and do napkins, then, you know, make sure you start fresh and you probably just wanna use the fabric paint on your roller, but because I'm just demoing this and I don't want you to have to wait for me, we're just gonna go straight because I started with my lightest color, now we're going dark. I'll probably get a slightly purple tone because I have pink mixing with aqua or teal, but I'm okay with that. Sometimes you mix colors and you get these really unexpected um, new tones that are really fun and delightful, and that's like a happy accident. I'm trying to get as much ink as I can or as much paint. The fabric is definitely going to absorb more paint than just paper, so keep that in mind. Try to really uh, load up your roller. All right, I'll try the wood grain one. Now you can see that this one is a little bit harder to line up because it has really specific lines on it. You'll see when I print that I don't always get it and that's fine. That's when you come up with a double print and I'll show you. All right, because these are napkins and not just paper, try to clean off your area. Make sure that you're rolling off the edge and you have newsprint that you're working on below. Give this a little roll first so it's fully inked or fully covered in paint. And we're just gonna go for it. I like to go from the bottom to the top, right off the edge. Oh, so nice. All right, so now I'm just kind of checking. I wanna make sure that I get a line as close as I can to where I started. You can go a little bit slower if you think you need to. Ooh, I pressed a little hard because I've got a lot of layers here, so I got some kind of indentation. That's fine from the roller. Try to keep a better angle. I'm just rotating this. So I had it kind of too low and I got some of my foam on there. There we go. I actually don't mind that. I think it looks like wood, so I think that's cool. Let's say you have a mistake. Oh, also, these little edges, you want to get those because I think it really looks nice when the pattern goes all the way off. But so that you don't waste any ink, why don't you print a piece of paper at the same time? It doesn't matter that you're using the fabric paint on the paper. It's okay. That's a thick guy. We'll only do that much. Oh no, I have two. Here we go. And then we can cut this up even though it's not perfectly aligned here. Let's go right off the edge here so that it goes right to the edge. Woo! I love it. It's so cool. So, oh, that's cool too because it's like in the center. You can play with that. Looks like the giving tree. All right, so this guy, now you have to read the paint manufacturer's recommendations for heat setting this. Usually fabric paint needs to be heat set or air dried. Um, I heat set mine with a pressing cloth on a no steam iron. And I wanna show you some of the other napkins that I made. So I'm just gonna set that guy aside. Get myself a clean piece of paper here. I love how this one turned out how pretty. If you want to make your own napkins, you can watch some of our classes on Creative Bug. Leanna has a great class on three different napkins, three different ways. We also have an ombre dyed napkin. You could totally ombre dye a napkin and then do your print roller on top of it. So look how pretty. That's the roller that has the bird in it. And then, sorry, this one I wanted to experiment with an overprinting. So when I said, I mentioned I have that paste paper class on Creative Bug where I do what I call wood grain plaid. This is the same thing. So I've got pink in the wood grain first, three passes, and then I've just rotated 90 degrees and done the wood grain again, this time in a darker color and you get this like awesome plaid effect. It's like very retro-y feeling. This is a really cool thing for anytime you have a mistake or you dropped ink on something. Maybe you have your some really special napkins or something that were your grandma's but they had tea stains. Try printing them because this is a new way to give them fresh life. And I wanna show you a really fun Easter technique for um, a little napkin folding for this guy. Do you guys have any questions? I'm gonna put away the roller now because I'm getting really messy over here. Uh, just a lot of ideas. Um, Shannon suggested doing <gasps> Shannon, I love that. Do you know that we're in a daily challenge for embroidery with Rebecca Rehnquist? You're probably watching that, and if you aren't, you have to get onto it right now because Rebecca's amazing. Shannon said you should roll out a print and then use that as a template for embroidery. I think that would be an awesome and super contemporary feel. A lot of these prints have a kind of vintage feel, but adding some hand embroidery, maybe picking some bright colors would be a great way to kind of up, up the modern approach. Actually, I wanted to show you earlier... There are seriously way too many things on my table. 
Um, if you've ever seen <laughs> rice paper, it comes on a roll. We've used it, or Jody Alexander uses it in her Arizumagami class. It looks like this. It's uh, meant for calligraphy practice. You can get this at the art supply store. I love this because you can see the actual fibers of the paper, so it has kind of like an elevated, more sophisticated feel than just regular paper. And because it comes in a roll, you can make an awesome table runner out of it. So this is a really long. It's like 10 or 12 feet, where I just did the roller pattern from top to bottom. I did all the left, and then I did all the right. Here's one that's a little short shorter but again larger than eight and a half by eleven where I did the wood grain so these are all great ideas you guys could try table runners on fabric or on paper <gasps> I know we always say it the sky's the limit but it really is the limit you can mm -hmm. there isn't a limit you can do everything okay so now I want to show you a really cute napkin folding technique so I have a couple of things happening um, I've got one of these craft eggs, I picked up a pack of these at Joann's. Uh, I think they're meant for collage, or you can try marble dyeing on them. We're gonna do a little bunny face on this, and I'm gonna use a bit of paint. I use my fingers all the time, so that's what we're gonna start with. I'm gonna do some little cheeks. This is a really translucent paint. Most of the neons tend to be translucent. Just holding it in a way that feels better. Okay, that's good because now it's dry. Baby wipe off your hands. If you've been watching any of our Creative Bug Lives, you know that we love baby wipes. And we're gonna draw a little face on this, but first, once your cheeks are dry, we're going to wrap this in one of our napkins that we just printed. So this has been heat set. And I'm just gonna do like a little roll, starting at one corner. Keep your roll about an inch and a half wide. Bring that tip to the center, and then this little egg is gonna go right in the middle. Make sure that paint is dry so it doesn't come off on your napkin. Oh my God, so cute already. You don't even know what I'm doing with it, it's already cute. Take, um, you could use a, one of those like cute little craft uh, rubber bands like that they use in hair ties that are like neon or something, but you can also just use a little bit of twine. And we're gonna tie this. I really need three hands for this project. Taryn's offering her hand, but she's holding a camera, and actually I need a longer piece of twine. Cut it like six or seven inches so that you can more easily tie it. We can adjust our egg too, so don't worry if the egg is not in the perfect position. But it's nice to have it nestled in there to start with. Okay, a really tight tie. Trim off the excess. You can reposition your egg, and then we're gonna draw a little bunny face on this. Or you could do Pup Charlie if you want, but we're gonna do a bunny. Some teeth. Whiskers, try not to draw on your napkin if you can. You can do this before you do your napkin, but I like to just make sure I didn't make my face too big and then it's hidden by the napkin. So that's why I like to just get the cheeks in and then draw the face. I'm using a Pigma brush pen. Um, I like that I can get a thick and thin line with this and it's also permanent once it dries. So there's my little bunny. Look how cute that is! I love these little natural eggs because I actually really love brown bunnies. I think they're the cutest. Or bl I like black bunnies too. They're so, so sweet. So you can see using the printed napkins, just another element for our Easter decor. And this is one of those wood grain where I did a double over it. So cute! Also, I'm obsessing over this double thing here. I love this. Like, just think if you could do this on a little name tag, or maybe you have some little Easter quotes or some kind of game that you want to play. Again, you don't have to do this for Easter. You could do something like this for a baby shower. All right. The last technique I want to show you, we're switching gears. Um, we're going to go to the plate because think about your entire dinner party, right? Or your Sunday brunch or whatever it is that you're doing. So you have your cute little napkin with your bunny. You have this beautiful table runner that you've made. You might have napkins that you've printed. Um, all of that paper that I showed you, that can become little wraps on motives. Um, it could be wrapping your cutlery since we're using our napkin with our bunny egg. So these things can all be added to your table so that it has a lot of bright color and patterns and you can play with a lot of color and coordinate it together. So now I'm bringing you to the plate and we're gonna switch gears a little. 
I've got a rubber stamp that I've cleaned well. I've got a little paper plate, a tiny piece of felt, just a scrap of felt, and some of my Wilton dye. This is just orange, and this is part of the color right system, so it comes in these little bottles. We're gonna put a little bit here in the center. And we put a piece of felt, and this is a technique from Yellow Owl Workshop, um, who's owned by Christine Schmidt, she's the artist behind it. It's on our site, and this is how to make your own stamp pad. She's using it for acrylic paint, but I'm using it in this case with food coloring so that we can stamp our plate and have it be food safe. You have to really get the ink or paint, or in our case, food coloring through that felt, but the felt keeps the food coloring from going deep in all over the stamp and giving us a really messy print. So just keep working it. If you need to add a little bit more um, coloring, you can. I might add a little more because I'm using a paper plate. It's absorbing a lot of this. You could do this on a glass plate instead. I actually really love having a little bit of food coloring in my pantry at all times because there's all kinds of stuff you can use it for. I also use it for arizimagami, which is like one of my favorite paper printing techniques. All right, so I'm just looking to make sure that I have ink all over. It looks like I have some little spots toward the edge that still need to be inked. Okay, this is good. So now you're gonna go to the center of your plate. So this is whatever kind of plate you're using. And what's great about this is it's gonna make this food safe, it's customizable, customizable. all you need is a rubber stamp. And it's just a cute way to change up a regular white plate and make it um, really interesting for your table decor. I'm trying not to rock it, I just wanna get good pressure because the top of the plate is domed a little, so it's not perfectly flat. It's just how it was made. Let's see how it looks. Oh, I missed the center. Now, I have a tip for using a paintbrush, but I did not bring a paintbrush up here. Hmm. <laughs> Do you have a paintbrush anywhere? Let's take a look. They're gonna find me a paintbrush because I didn't bring one up. All right, let's, we can try it again. If you make a mistake like this, it's not a big deal. Um, if your ceramic is always made a little bit differently, so in this case, there's a dome, I'm just gonna take a baby wipe, wipe this away. This is what's great about this and then once we find a paintbrush I can show you a technique yes that'll be perfect make sure this is dry because you don't want this to bleed just wipe it off with our okay give it a second to dry now that you've baby wiped it make sure you re-ink your stamp every time you attempt this just like you would a regular rubber stamp Make sure we have good coverage. The edges here. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Don't drop it. <laughs> Let's try it one more time. So now that I know that the center divots down, that I'm just gonna press extra hard there. All right. Better, but not perfect. Okay, so this is where you can come in with a tiny paintbrush. And Wilton makes um, paintbrushes for food. You can just use a clean one that does not share your craft supplies. And you can just come in here and touch it up. It's super easy. Obviously, I picked a motif that was also easy to replicate. But it's actually not hard. You can look back at your rubber stamp just to see what that looks like and it paints so easily. You can use this on the surface of cookies too. Leanna and I did a live shoot where we painted the tops of cookies with this Colorite system. We also have a great class on how to do marbled cookies, which would look so cool on your Easter table. And I have another one that I did earlier with pink. So look how cute if you start to assemble your table you can play with using some of your pattern paper as a runner or as a placemat. You've got your really cute bunnies. Maybe you're gonna use some of these labels for name tags. The customizable possibilities. It's 
so much fun. I really don't want to stop. I just want to be printing more with my paint roller. Do you guys have any other questions? Are you ready for Easter? It's really funny as I was um, kind of prepping this Easter. Don't tell anyone. It's like kind of my least favorite holiday. I got like a really bad stomach ache when I was six and it just changed the holiday for me for the rest of my life. Yeah. But I was really excited when I started making all of this. I was like, oh, what am I gonna do for Easter? How am I gonna make my table? I always have Easter with my family. So um, I'll probably be in charge of the table decor this year. Do we have any other questions? Um, yes, we had a question from a, a little while ago. Um, we want to know if you can submerge the paint rollers in water. Yes, the question is, can you submerge the paint rollers in water? That's fine. I would um, leave them kind of up on their end to drain dry. You don't want any paint to get inside of it or um, if you lay it on its side, maybe it might cause a wobbliness or impression. So just make sure you Really clean it well. You can use some light soap. Don't use anything super scrubby, but a paintbrush would be fine to get the paint out of any of these little divots. And then one more for you, Charlotta, who's going to be here next <gasps> Yay! She wants to know, do you bake the plate in the oven? Oh, hi, Charlotta. Um, Charlotta Hamilton is coming next week. We're super excited. She's visiting us from Toronto, and she's going to be filming a daily challenge. You should check out her Instagram feed, Blue Shine Art, so that you can be super excited, and she'll be on the live shoot with me on Thursday. Did we tell you that, Charlotta? I hope we did. Um, and she's asking, can you bake the plate? Yeah, if your plate is oven safe, make sure that it is, then yes, you could bake this at a low temperature to kind of heat set it. Um, you saw that it's dissolvable with water because it's food coloring, that's the beauty of this, so that you're not using like actual stamping ink to eat off of. It's really just about the presentation until you put the food on your plate and after that, it's gonna get absorbed in your mashed potatoes or potato salad or what have you. So just think about that. Maybe don't do black motifs um, because it might turn your potato salad gray. Just something to think of. Thank you guys for always being here and being present and being excited about all of our great crafts. If you haven't checked out Creative Bug before, make sure you do so. Leanna posted a link. We have that great coupon, Joanne30, which allows you to get 30 days of Creative Bug. That's to watch all of our over 1,000 classes and also 30% off your supplies at Joanne. And we'll see you next week.